Hi everyone, Shane Armon Rowe here. This week, Steam OS 3.5 is now within the reach of we, the mere mortals, on your Steam Deck. That's right, on the preview channel right now, you can get OS 3.5 and all of the great features that it offers. Okay, there's probably a couple of bugs left in there, so if you're not an experimental kind of person, you might wanna stand clear. But in this video, we're gonna show you five things in five minutes about Steam OS 3.5 that you're gonna love. Stick around. <music> graphic driver updates. We've had a major update to the graphics drivers on the Steam Deck, and for once, that actually makes a difference. Let's forgo the technical aspects, and let's just say that in many cases, you can see 10% or even more performance increases in your favorite games even the latest games like Mortal Kombat 1 here. Benchmarks of the game showed about 40 to 41 FPS on OS 3.4. With this upgrade and no changes to settings or weird tweaks or mods, we now get 44 FPS. A game I've complained about a lot in the past, Valheim, has seen a nice boost too, keeping well over 30 FPS, and even in developed areas, we're seeing good frame rate. Not every game will see an increase, of course, the venerable Baldur's Gate 3, for example, does not show an appreciative increase in performance between 3.4 and 3.5. But on Reddit right now, Redditors are benching and sharing the results of their favorite games, and the numbers look good. Screen and video output features. One of the most popular reasons to install Decky Loader is to use the Vibrancy Deck plugin, which allows you to improve the warmth and saturation of the deck's display's color. With OS 3.5, you can boost or reduce color as well as alter the warmth of the screen using built-in controls. Along with this great addition, we now have HDR, or High Dynamic Range, available, offering even better color representation on compatible external monitors and docks. VRR, or Variable Refresh Rate, is also possible with compatible hardware, which enables the display and deck to sync up to the same frame rate, eliminating lag, judder, and frame tearing for a much better experience and display. SMTP fixes. SMT, or simultaneous multi-threading, is a feature that allows a single physical processor to run multiple instructions at the same time. Normally that is a good thing, but in some cases, namely popular emulators, this functionality can actually reduce performance dramatically. The simple act of turning off SMTP can drastically improve performance, which is why a lot of users use the Decky plugin power tools to disable it. With OS 3.5, it is no longer necessary to manage this yourself, making emulators for systems like the GameCube and Switch much better, offering smoother play and often a good increase in FPS. Take Cruise and Blast on the Switch. With SMT turned on, we're seeing low 30s to 40s. In this video, using power tools, flipping off SMT nets us performance in the high 40s and 50s and provides much smoother gameplay. Look at Simpsons Hit and Run on GameCube. On OS 3.4, we drop frames frequently, especially when we hit that phone booth. But on OS 3.5, a rock-solid 60 FPS. New scaling features. If you're like me and rarely play your Steam Deck plugged into an external display, you may not have really played around with the scaling features on the deck. But if you're trying to play games in 1080p or 4K and have a sudden epiphany that the deck was really designed to play games only at 800p, well, these scaling features may be for you. They've always been there, but we get some new stuff in OS 3.5, including NIS, or NVIDIA Image Scaling, which is a spatial upscaler and sharpener. In Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies here, we have forced the output to 1080p, but told the game to run at 720p. This older game doesn't have FSR or any sort of image scaling built in, so the deck is doing all the work. You can see as we pan through the various settings how the upscaler does its job. Different scalers work better for different games, but it is nice to know that Valve is still working hard to make lower resolution games play on larger resolution displays. Finally, automatic external drive mounting. Since the Steam Deck was released, people have been trying to get external hard drives, USB drives, micro SD cards, docking ports, and more to extend the storage of the unit. While adding extra drives is easy enough, it required a manual process to mount the drives before you could use them. 
meaning you're sort of stuck with doing things in desktop mode or trying to use plug-in scripts, tricks, and nonsense to get the drives to show up in gaming mode. With OS 3.5, when the deck sees a drive connected, it automatically mounts and is immediately available regardless of desktop or gaming mode. This is a long requested feature and it is great that Valve is listening to its audience. So what do you think? What is it about OS 3.5 that you love? Leave a comment down below. Tell us all the good things and the bad that you've experienced with OS 3.5. As always, if you like what you saw, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, ding that bell, and you'll get first crack at our latest videos. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.